Welcome to this video lecture. My name is Mark Scythian. The date today is February 19, 2023. The title of this video lecture is Biophysics of Human Health. So we can get started here, focusing first on human consciousness, which is the electrical or the light body interface with the physical body. So this is where conscious human thought projects signals to the brain. The brain is the chemist of the human body, which then takes the waveforms and converts them into chemical compounds. This is known as complementary chemistry and obeys a quantum biology model, which is based on the thoughts or waves converted into particles, chemicals, and vice versa. So based on conscious thought forms, the choice thereof, the brain will produce complementary chemical compounds matching those thought signals and then establish an electrochemical potential for which the nervous system absorbs and then sends to the physical body and then vice versa the physical body sends its responses back to the nervous system then the brain and then back to the consciousness the human consciousness so this is known as the psychosomatic feedback loop as specified here. So if we move down into the lecture, we have the body, the physical body as a converter of potential to kinetic energy, a energy converting device. So we start with the heart and the lungs, which provide the fuel input through the blood. The blood feeds the body cells and so this is then harnessed through digestion for which the food groups, protein, carbs, and fats with their energy density specified here are converted into the glucose, fats, and proteins required to support cellular respiration, which then absorb through the small intestine into the bloodstream and then are transferred to the cells Inside each cell is the mitochondria, which then converts the food, glucose, and oxygen into caloric energy. So an example of caloric energy output, the metric system equivalent to the BTU, we have the one calorie per second is equal to 4.184 watts of power. So after the cell extracts the energy, we cannot create or destroy matter. We can only change its form. So the output of the cell then sends the waste products, the carbon dioxide, wastewater, and liquid and solid metabolites to the lymphatic system, which is essentially a water jacket. And this then cleans the body of waste subject to excretion. So it passes from the output of the cell through the lymph node into the lymphatic system. So the sequence of events we have here from blood to cells to lymph nodes to lymphatic system, and then the solid metabolites flow back into the large intestine through the lymphatic system back into the large intestine, which is then the solid waste accumulation subject to elimination. And then the liquid metabolites, they then flow to the liver and are converted to NH3 ammonium, which then flows to the kidneys, which then converts the ammonium into urea. So we have the kidneys, which are connected to the bladder through the ureters, and then the bladder out through the urethra for excreting liquid waste. And then the urethra is split up into the male and female urethral tract, which has various junctions, slightly more complex in the male, versus more of a direct flow for the female. And so this is relevant to mammalian physiology, in this case, human mammalian physiology. So next we move on to the bones, tendons, ligaments, muscles, blood vessels, and skin. And note that the skin is the largest organ upon the largest organ in the body. So we have to realize that the Muscles in the body, they contract and relax because of sodium chloride. 
causes the muscles to contract, including the heart, through the actin gates, and the potassium chloride allows the muscles to relax, including the heart, through the myosin gate. So the balance of alkali earth metals, also known as salts, are three sodium chloride molecules per one potassium chloride molecule. So in this ratio, this is when the pH of the water moves to the alkaline pH of 7.45. So then the water is able to conduct electricity and allow cellular communication in the body. This then also stabilizes the blood pressure. So we have then the balanced electrolytic solution of the aquatic mammalian water flow for the mammal physiology. And so the next point is the mind-body connection, the, the relationship between the thoughts and the physical body. This is the psychosomatic mind-body connection. So we start with the consciousness to the brain, and then the brain is split up into the brain stem, which autonomically, automatically pumps your heart. This is the medulla obligata. And then we have the limbic system, which is kind of in the center part of the brain, broken up into the hippocampus, cerebrum, and cerebellum. And then we have the guidance system, the hypothalamus, which functions as a control device to regulate the environmental stimuli response. So if you feel thirsty or you feel cold or you feel hot, this is based on the adaptation your cells have to your environment. And that is a condition response from the hypothalamus. So if you feel cold or you feel thirsty or whatever, that's your hypothalamus uh, regulating both automatic, autonomic and voluntary systems in your body. And this is subject to adaptation as well. So you can get used to uh, your environment. That's a hypothalamus doing this. So then we have the brain broken up into the subconscious part of the brain, which is a million times more powerful and computing power compared to the conscious mind. So repetition and training is where the subconscious eventually picks that up and puts everything on autopilot. And then this is broken down into the voluntary sympathetic and the parasympathetic parts of both the human consciousness and the brain. This is the electric body and the physical body interfaced. So moving forward, uh, we have then the formula for health, which is 50% psychology, 25% diet hygiene, and 25% physical fitness or activity. So what supports health is that we have a cell. The cell eventually, aside from producing power and comprising the physical state of the body, the cell undergoes meiosis for which its nucleus then divides the cell into cell replication. So the cell will clone itself and then the old cell dies off and is replaced with a new cell. This is constituting health and it's optimization. This meiosis optimization is 50% predicated on psychology and 50% predicated on the physical. So if you're not in a fight or flight response and your cells are not subject to stress hormones, then your immune system operates well, and then you're able to multiply your cells and maintain your health. So 50% of the load is psychological and 50% is physical. So if we are replacing more than one cell at a time through prolonged tissue tension or exercise, this is also equal to non-surgical tissue expansion, which results in new tissue growth. And this is when meiosis then functions as mitosis when you make more than one cell at a time. So this is how you get healthy tissue growth where applicable. So the human body is made up of 50 trillion cells, 100 billion cells die each day, 100 billion cells are replaced. This is what health is. And then that's broken down 50% into psychology and then 50% into the physical, which is split into two 25% sectors which are the diet and hygiene and physical activity and so each cell is another one of you so when you look in the mirror you're not just looking at one entity you're actually looking at 50 trillion of you holographic biology so based on your psychology every single one of your cells is going to react the same way 
So if you're angry and you're stressed, then your cells all, most, too many cells close down and do not function properly, do not heal. But if you're calm, proactive, focused, happy, uh, can-do attitude, then each cell in your body behaves just, just like you are. So you have control over your body by how you think, how you choose to think. So each cell is charged with 1.5 volts times 50 trillion cells. So you know the potential of one to help or hurt themselves based on how they think and how well they keep their nutrition and uh, hydration standards up to date on an ongoing basis every day by the hour and monitoring themselves kind of in a subtle manner. So if we minimize or eliminate the fight or flight fear reactions when not necessary, then the cells communicate properly, stress hormones cease, and then the immune system gets all the energy to heal the body and maintain the meiosis and the cell replication. So this requires staying calm. And then this is where we conserve energy to the immune system. And this is maximized through uh, Max, this is maximized through nutrition, and we can maximize this process through minimizing food intake because digestion itself also steals a lot of energy from the immune system. And so the human brain does not know the difference between real events and imagined events, so you need to be careful how you think. And this is because the brain has a whole lot of mirror neurons which produce chemicals based on the environment that you experience as well as the thought forms you experience. The brain does not know the difference between the imaginal act and the real events because of the mirror neurons. So rule of thumb, no fearful thinking and proactive can-do attitude. Problems can never exist without solutions. Remember that. So another uh, point here in the lecture is uh, where applicable, avoid sugar and soft drinks. And processed food because number one there's only so much oxygen that you can intake into the body to convert the sugar into caloric energy and in doing so every sugar molecule requires three molecules of water to do so in order to store enough oxygen to fire those sugar molecules off so sugar by itself will dehydrate the human body by as much as 300 percent and so Rule of thumb, consume one volume ounce of purified water per one pound of body weight over an 18-hour period. So if a 160-pound 160, 160 person needs to consume 160 volume ounces of water over an 18-hour period, and this equates to about nine volume ounces per hour, which isn't a big commitment. And if you drink... Uh, have bad habits or whatever, you need a little bit more water, at least one and a half times more. So if you can drink 16 ounces of water per hour, if you have processed food, fast food, sugar in your body from soft drinks, then you can actually dilute the toxins and push them out of your body with uh, little or no adverse effects. So the next point, very, very important in this lecture on biophysics of health is chronic dehydration leads to blood agglutination. This is when the blood dehydrates and its viscosity goes up and then it eventually plasticizes in the blood vessels and clogs the arteries and veins and small blood vessels. So chronic dehydration leads to blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, as well as crystallization of toxins within the kidneys and the ureters. So you get kidney and ureter stones this also dehydrates the GI tract, leading to constipation. Will then lead to cell damage, brain damage, migraine headaches, type 2 diabetes, uh, DNA damage, which can eventually manifest as cancer, eyesight deterioration, tooth decay, blocked lymph nodes, bone deterioration, uh, decreased oxygen gas absorption, and decreased CO2 carbon dioxide gas removal. So water consumption only includes purified water with electrolytes, 7.45 pH. So that is reverse osmosis purified water with water softening or the supermarket purified water with electrolytes. And then it says electrolytes added for taste. And then it says 7.45 pH. You can buy 
a gallon of that type of water for about a dollar, one dollar and ten cents USD. So it's very cost effective. Next, we have sunlight plus skin. So skin is the largest organ in the body. So if we focus on this molecular uh, compound here, C27H46O1. This is the chemical formula for cholesterol. And when cholesterol absorbs electrons from the sun through the photoelectric effect grounding into the skin, it then causes two hydrogen atoms to disassociate from the cholesterol molecule and then convert into vitamin D. So you don't get vitamin D directly from the sunlight. You get vitamin D when the sunlight electrons ground into your skin and then they then absorb into your bloodstream and then cause two hydrogen atoms to disassociate, converting the cholesterol molecule into the vitamin D molecule. So having too high cholesterol is not good, but much of that surplus cholesterol is then converted into uh, vitamin D. And then the rest of the remaining cholesterol is used to maintain uh, brain health and also create necessary hormones in the body. So uh, it's all there in nature. And this is the natural science of nature versus the synthetic science that's in the other industries that uh, seek to uh, take a shortcut with adverse effects. So, uh, so you can't make vitamin D without cholesterol and sunlight. So you need to have the sunlight. So next is glucose plus oxygen. One combined convert into caloric energy. And note that you need vitamin C in your body in order for vitamin D to absorb. So you need vitamin C, vitamin D, cholesterol levels, plus the sunlight, at least half an hour to 45 minutes a day of direct sunlight exposure. And then all of your vitals and your blood levels come to health. And going back to glucose, this is only converted into caloric energy when glucose meets oxygen and oxygen can only meet glucose in a properly hydrated body. And then you quickly convert the glucose into caloric energy without elevating your insulin levels. So insulin is there not to convert glucose into caloric energy, but glucose is only there to allow oxygen and glucose to permeate into the cell. So insulin behaves much like glass pieces in the, in the bloodstream and uh, quote unquote pokes holes into cells. And so if you have a surge of insulin, this will then result in insulin shock and will kill you. And that's when your heart rate goes up to, you know, 160, 180. And so an insulin overdose will kill you. So insulin should be very low and steady, uh, produced out of the pancreas. And so, uh, only oxygen, gas, and glucose cancel each other out and convert into caloric energy. So what happens if people eat too much food and they are dehydrated, they eat too much and they don't have enough hydration to then convert the food into energy by absorbing enough oxygen and converting the food into a solution, uh, the insulin will then spike and increase forcing the body to convert most of the food into fat. So three meals a day is too much food for average person not involved in constant labor intense activities. So sedentary lifestyle plus three meals a day is very dangerous and causes the insulin levels to surge. And so the body will protect itself by converting most of the food that is eaten into fat in order to con uh, in order to prevent insulin shock so that's where the, the fat epidemic or the obesity issue is due to too much food and too little water so if you, you decrease your food intake increase your water intake and try your best to avoid soft drinks and sugars then the food you eat will actually convert into energy and then it'll start burning the rest of the fat that your body does not need it'll start to burn it off. And so there's some, there's a lot of people who struggled with weight loss and then they just went to this simple 
technique and they lost the weight and they're healthy and their cells are replicating much healthier than they were in the past. And so it's always a simple answer. That's science is a complicated set of analysis to get to a simple answer. And that's what this lecture is providing. And so healthy human bodies function on mostly water and oxygen gas, minimally on food. So the thermodynamic efficiency of the human body cells is extremely high. And one meal could keep somebody alive for as much as three or four days. So uh, one to two meals a day is more than enough food, but you need the water to make all of this function properly in the body. So another point to make, if one is never hungry, their anti-aging genes do not work. So humans have been on the earth for 200,000 years as proven through mathematical biology, uh, doing quantitative analysis on DNA regression of human DNA. And so there's nothing before 200,000 years on a scientific model. So of those 200,000 years, 199,900 years of 200,000 years of human existence, humans ate only once a day. They were foraging for food and whatnot. So it is a very uh, disruptive behavior to quickly move into civilization and have a sedentary life and eat three meals a day. It's a very disruptive, um, almost uh, very damaging way to live. Uh, but even if you did that, if you had enough water, a lot of your excess food would come out of you through excretion. So keep that in mind. The antidote to almost all of these bad habits is large amounts of hydration. But the water must be electrolytic with a pH of 7.45 and purified through reverse osmosis. If you just drink distilled water, then you don't get the electrolytes and you actually lose electrolytes. So stick to water softened reverse osmosis water, or you can buy the alkaline water at the supermarket. It says purified water with electrolytes added for taste. That is what you want to consume. Very simple. So more food, less water consumption, less physical activity equals chronic illness, increased aging, and decreased lifespan. So if we look at the DNA molecule here, we can split this into two streams. One, it's influenced by the environment, which includes 50% psychology, how you think, that's the environment, and 50% physical, as in your water hydration, your activity, uh, good nutrition. So the science of epigenetics has proven that the genetic model by itself is not that accurate, but the epigenetic model is the most accurate description of how human DNA behaves. And so this is the behavior or genetics influenced by the environment and lifestyle. So epigenetics is the correct uh, and most accurate uh, physics and biophysics to access when learning about how to stay healthy by studying human DNA molecule. So what does the DNA molecule do? It produces new cells to replace old cells. So the DNA molecule is a cell factory. It's not a cell, it's a molecule, and it produces cells, just like a car factory produces cars. The DNA molecule produces new cells. So a stem cell comes out, it gets a signal, and then it becomes a skin cell, or it becomes a GI tract cell, or it becomes a kidney cell. And this then replaces the cells on your body. So things like heart cells and eye cells and brain cells, they take something between seven and 10 years to replace, but Skin cells, muscle cells, they're between 25 and 50 days. They're between 7 and 40 days. They're very short lifespans and replacements. So they're all predicated on the water content. So DNA molecules, they're made out of 93% water. Uh, brain cells are 96% water. Uh, all other cells in the body, 80% water. Uh, we have... Uh, the stem cells in your body, we have the um, lymphocyte cells are all like 95% water, very, very important. So you need at least a volume ounce of water per pound of body weight over 18 hours. So it's really simple. If you weigh 160 pounds, 160 volume ounces divided into 18 hours. So it's about nine volume ounces per hour. And if you have some bad habits, you just add 
another six or seven ounces per hour, and then you're good. So coming to the end of this lecture, we have the DNA molecule telomere, which looks like a railroad track when and examined. And this telomere plus the stem cell plus protein plus oxygen gas plus glucose will yield a new cell. So aging is when the telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter. So we can see here. So this is predicated on biological age, not calendar age. So for example, somebody might have a calendar age of 50 years old, but their biological age might be 35 and vice versa. You might have people who are 40 and they have a biological age of 52, 55. And this is due to the toxins that build up in the body both physical and psychological toxins. So people might have a negative attitude and they might be physically toxic and then they have more DNA damage, they have more uh, DNA information loss and then the next set of cells that are created are in, have a shorter telomeres and then this appears exteriorly as ex an external level as aging, a very aged person and then you find out they're not that old. So. Biological age is not the same as calendar age. Just that's a very important uh, aspect. So uh, drinking water and keeping a proactive psychology, there you go. That's just about 99% of uh, maintaining your health. And so the aging is based on the incomplete data transfer of telomere uh, to the next batch of cells. This is biological aging. And this is described by the second law of thermodynamics, which is entropy energetic disorder and decay over the function of time. And this entropy aging can be minimized by fasting, consuming purified water in large amounts and deep breathing, because then you charge more oxygen into the water jacket. And so if we look at the water molecule, this is a liquid crystal data medium. And the water molecule is bent 104.5 degrees. Uh, so the electrons that spin around this molecule, 10 electrons to be exact, they have a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. So this has also been a huge storage data medium concept in the computer science world. Hence, we have that in Wi-Fi as well. So that's the electromagnetic vibration of the equivalent chemistry of water. And so this has become a great system to store data in but water stores all sorts of data. It is like a hard drive. So water isn't just a chemical uh, solvent that leads to making a solution. Water also stores data. And so your psychology can also program water, change its crystalline structure, and enhance whatever type of thought form to physically manifest in your body. So let's say you choose to be a problem solver and you're well hydrated. The crystalline structures then also facilitate that physically. So Dr. Emoto in Japan had proven that uh, uh, some years ago. And so now that is a mainstream healthcare initiative to understand the programmability of water, but computer scientists and electrical engineers have known this for years. Uh, so next uh, we cover the water uh, composition of healthy blood it should be 93% of DNA molecules should be 95%, brain cells 96%, the rest of the cells in the human body 80%. So bad habits can be mitigated into low toxicity through high consumptions of purified water with the electrolytes. And this then leads to detoxification of toxic water soluble solutions at body temperature 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're talking about water soluble toxins. Most toxins people are uh, exposed to are water soluble, but we're not talking about snake venom and cytokine storms and those types of things because they are not water soluble. So many will disagree that uh, not all toxins are water soluble. That is very true, but most toxins people are absorbed to are water soluble. So if you have a few bad habits, you can actually get away with them by compensating through consuming large amounts of purified water. So in Pharmacology 101, it is understood that no, there is no such thing as toxicity, only toxic doses. So this toxic dose of water-soluble toxins is mitigated into low toxicity through high consumption of purified water. So that's the simple answer to health and well-being. Keep your psychology under control and keep your purified water hydration optimized in high levels. So 
When doing so, this then leads to clean blood vessels over time, yes, lower blood pressure, and it is facilitated through fasting. So intermittent fasting. So if you're not used to fasting, don't jump right into it. Start it very slowly. And over a few years, you can develop the ability to intermittent fast with the hydration. And then you see yourself with a lot of energy and almost no sick days. Next is the human body's interstitial fluid. 75% of it is the lymphatic fluid. It's mostly made up of water. The lymphatic system is basically the entire immune system of the body, along with the GI tract, the large intestine especially, and the lymphatic system cleans the internal body, removes cellular waste, decreasing toxicity, but it needs the water to do so. Uh, lymphatic system has no pump, so in order to move the lymphatic fluid around, you need exercise, stretching, general motion, and general physical activity, like just cleaning up your house, taking a walk, that's sufficient to move the lymphatic fluid around your body. And then uh, next is 25% of the bo human body's interstitial liquid or connective tissue is the blood. So the blood is a closed system and has its own pump, the heart, and its job is to transfer oxygen and nutrients to cells to harness caloric energy to facilitate cell replication and power all body parts. Do know that the blood does not actually touch the cell, but it is a closed system, a vehicle for transferring uh, vehicle for transferring oxygen and nutrients to cells. So the blood itself is then a fuel system to the cell, and then the lymphatic system then removes the waste and sends it out to the ex excretory organs uh, as such. So the artery brings in the oxygen and the food and the glucose, and then the vein removes the carbon dioxide and the wastewater. And that will happen uh, actually through the pulmonary lung system. That's where the exchange is, but everything else will be the lymphatic system. Very important to focus on. 75% of the liquid in your body is lymphatic system. So you don't want that to clog and uh, become seized because then you can't remove your weight. So a lot of people, when they uh, gain weight, it's not because of the food. It's because they're not removing the toxins from their body due to a dehydrated body, due to a clogged lymphatic system. And then what looks like gaining weight is actually toxins building up in the body. So then the clogged lymph nodes uh, occur and all sorts of health problems occur. But if you get to the source of the problem, it's dehydration. And it is also the fight or flight, negative psychology, people playing a victim and all that. And then that su shuts the cells down because your cells think something is out to get you. It goes in the flight or fight mode. That's all because you chose to think like that. But let's say you chose to not think like that. Your cells would open up, communicate with each other. You hydrate, and then your lymphatic system flushes out, and then all your toxins come out. And then your weight, you lose your weight, you lose your overweightness, and then everything functions again, and your human machine is now running in optimized state, and then you're a completely different person. So remember, your cells are constantly replicating. Uh, just because you had some bad habits and bad lifestyle doesn't mean it's set in stone. You can change it by changing your habits, drinking more water, uh, changing your psychology into problem-solving, can-do attitude, and remember, for a problem to exist, there must be a solution or else a problem can't exist. So if you're in a fearful state, you can't use your intellectual faculties properly. They actually reduce. If you're in a calm, focused state, even if bad things are happening, then much of your energy not only goes to your immune system, it goes to your brain. And then you're quickly able to identify solutions sitting right in front of you and then you work slow and steady and you solve your big problem into a solution. Then you get used to that and then everything's easy in life and you can go forward and do whatever you want. So this is the fundamentals, the biophysics fundamentals of health. So the summary to take away from this lecture is proactive calm psychology plus purified water consumption plus good nutrition plus minimal food consumption plus good hygiene plus physical activity, plus sunlight exposure, no sunscreen, plus deep breathing, 
equals ongoing prolonged health, high quality of life, reduced aging, little or no sick days, and long lifespan. So feel free to pause this lecture and go through it one by one and absorb the concepts uh, at your own pace. So thank you for watching this lecture and have a great day.